What's up guys, in this video, what I wanna do is show you how to get rid of some denominators by not exactly rationalizing your denominator, but actually combining them. So you can see here, we have a lot going on the left-hand side, right? We have one over a secant of t minus one, plus a one over secant of t plus one. So we have two denominators, right? And the one thing I want you to remember is when you have fractions, right? And you don't have fractions on the right-hand side, the main thing you're gonna to wanna to do is combine those fractions together and think about a way that you can get rid of them. Now, we don't actually need, as I mentioned, we don't actually need to rationalize the denominator because guess what? By identifying our common denominator of, um, of these two fractions, we're actually going to already create that rationalizing the denominator effect. Because one thing that gets you know trouble with students, I think is when we're trying to add fractions when we have trigonometric functions, right? And you can see here, this looks kind of confusing, right? We have secant of t minus one, secant of t plus one. And it's like, what the heck? Like, how do I find the common denominator here? So the fastest, the easiest, the quickest way to identify and find a common denominator is just to multiply your denominators. And since these have nothing in common, then that is exactly what I'm gonna want to do. So my least common multiple here of my denominators is going to be a secant squared minus one, right? Because that's actually, actually, you know what? I'm sorry, let's go ahead and... Um, I don't want to do that yet. Let's go ahead and um, rewrite this as their product minus one times a secant of t plus one. Okay. All right. So now basically what I want to do then is to get the common denominator over here. I need to multiply by the secant of t plus one. That's why I didn't want to kind of get into that. I don't want to get too confused in here for a second. And therefore this is going to be a secant of t plus one. And then over here, I need to multiply by a secant of t minus one all over a secant of t minus one. You can see there's quite a bit, a lot going on, but the cool thing is, what happens when I multiply this out? This gives me a secant squared of t minus one. Now, if you know your trigonometric identities, right? If you know your Pythagorean identities, you'll know that this is gonna give you a tangent squared of t, okay? So that's very important. So if you don't know it, make sure you go and look it up because I'm not gonna go back through it on, on this video. Make sure you know your Pythagorean identities. Now on this right-hand side, now what's nice about this problem is it's actually pretty simple. We know my common denominator is now a tangent squared of t. In the numerator, like I'm just multiplying by one, right? So look what I have. I have a secant of t plus one plus a secant of t, uh, let's see, minus one. And that's gonna be all over a tangent squared of t. Now my one minus one, right? Our one plus one is, those are just gonna go to zero. And then I'm gonna have a two secant of t all over a tangent squared. Okay, so here's where things can start to get a little interesting. So I'm gonna have a two secant of t all over a tangent squared of t. Okay, so now how do I get rid of my denominator? I can't rationalize the denominator. I'm not looking for like multiplying by a radical. What I'm gonna to wanna to do in this case is multiply, um, I wanna rewrite everything in terms of sines and cosines. So to do that, I'm gonna say two times a one over a cosine of t divided by a sine squared of t all over a cosine squared of t, okay? Now, the reason why I'm doing this is because I want you to see what our things are going to divide out. How do I get rid of a sine squared of t over a cosine squared of t in the denominator? Well, to do that, what you simply wanna do is multiply by the reciprocal. So what's the reciprocal of sine squared of t divided by cosine squared of t? Well, that's gonna be a cosine squared of t divided by a sine squared of t. So I'm gonna do that in the oh, in the denominator as well as in the numerator. Oh, what am I doing? That needs to be a sine squared of t. Now, here's the cool thing. What happens here? Well, over here, like those, you know, divide out, right? Over here, my cosines squared of t are going to divide out. Uh, oh, sorry, that's gonna leave me one cosine is gonna divide out, but I'm still gonna have one more, right? So I'm still gonna have one more cosine of t. And is that gonna give me my cotangent? Okay, yeah. Um, so I'm still gonna have one more cosine of t. Now again, things are not being that, things are still not done yet, okay? So what I have here now is a two, um, let's see here, a cosine times, all, I'm sorry, all over a sine squared of t. That's over t at all. Now I might be thinking, okay, okay, how is this still gonna be equal to? I gotta get this to be a two, a cotangent t and cosecant. Now, the thing that we need to do there is we need like two different functions and I can't have a sine squared of t in the denominator, right? So one thing I want you to understand here is I can rewrite this as a two cosine of t divided by a sine of t times a sine of t, right? Doesn't 
sine squared of t means sine of t times sine of t? It does. So what's cool about this is now I can group these. Since everything is separated by multiplication, I can group these together like this. So I can say a 2 over a sine of t, which is going to be a 2, cosecant of t, and a cosine of t over a sine of t is going to be a cotangent of t. And now you can see that is going to be exactly the same as this one over here. Now, if I did not prove to you already how important knowing your Pythagorean identities are in this example, well, in the next video, I'm going to prove it even more on how you can make your problem so much easier just by knowing the Pythagorean identities.